What's up, everybody? It is the 4K Lowdown. And after doing the top 10 list of 1984, which I loved, it was a great list, I thought, you know what? I want to start working my way backwards. So I was looking at the films of 2021, and, you know, a lot of them haven't come out on video yet. So I like to actually have the physical movie in hand. Um, so I'm not going to start with 2021. I'm going to do that later on this year, but I am going to do 2020. So I thought I'd do my top 10 list from 2020. And I followed the same format, basically took my 12 favorite movies of that year, scored them, and then ranked them from one to 12. So the last two, they're alternates but they were still pretty good movies that wanted to be mentioned. But I got to tell you, um, 2020 wasn't a good year for film. It wasn't a good year for anybody. With COVID hitting and all the lockdowns and everything happened, a lot of shows got canceled, a lot of shows stopped filming, so we didn't get anything new. And there wasn't a whole lot of movies that came out. I was I was having trouble finding movies that I scored really high in 2020. So um, I got to say, compared to 1984, it's like shooting a bullet and throwing it. But we'll get started. And there's still a couple on this list, um, thanks to Netflix, that did not actually make it to physical media. So those are on the list. I'm still hoping for physical media. So Netflix, if you watch this, come on, let me have them. And we'll get to those as we go through. So, like I said, took my top 12, broke it down, scored them, and let's get started. So, getting the lowest score, my first alternate is, and I'm showing the trilogy, is um, Bad Boys for Life. And Bad Boys for Life, action comedy, you get what you get. Um, and it was kind of, I thought it was kind of a cool ending for the trilogy. I was, I was actually really impressed. So I bought all three movies on, on one Blu-ray and because I only have the DVD of one and two. So I figured eh, I might as well get all three movies on Blu-ray because I like watching them and I can just marathon them one day or just pick a movie here and there, but it's good, not great. So as my first alternate or ranking number 12 on my list is bad boys for life at a 7.2. So you see how far I had to go um, to pick my top movies. Uh, coming in at number 11, or my second alternate, um, second honorable mention, is the movie Underwater. Um, and this, I thought Christian Stewart did a pretty good job of acting in this one. Um, I know normally we say she can't act her way out of a paper bag, and a lot of times that's true, but I... I, I liked this one. It was suspenseful. It was something I hadn't seen before because it kind of starts as almost a disaster movie and then builds into like like a monster film or or some kind of nasty alien or whatever. But anyway, um, it's yeah, it's suspenseful. It grips you. Good movie. Um, it ties with Bad Boys, but I like this one a little bit better than Bad Boys for Life. So number 11, or my second alternate, is Underwater. Gets a 7.2 also. Great job, Kristen Stewart. All right, now we're getting into the fun ones. So at number 10, um, I was, you know, I had to toss some stuff around. And then I was like, you know what? I really like this movie. Um, I kind of wanted it higher on my list. I liked it better than a few of these, but um, score is a score. So at number 10 um, is my first Netflix movie, and that is Enola Holmes. I'm going to see if I can put a, a picture of the cover, a picture of the poster um, from IMDb on this thing. So hopefully, hopefully you see it. I'm going to try to get that. To work, but anyway, Enola Holmes. Uh, I I loved the story. I loved how they did it. The cast is great. You got Millie Bobby Brown who did an excellent job. Sam Claflin, 
Henry Cavill, Helena Bonham Carter. Um, and it's kind of a cool little detective story, kind of, kind of cutesy, kind of fun, lots of good fights. Um, it actually played out exactly like a Sherlock Holmes movie. Um, so I'm actually hoping for more of these. I hope there's some sequels coming and I really hope this gets a physical media release, but at 7.3, which was lower than I expected, Enola Holmes comes in at number 10 on my list of favorites from 2020. So let's go to number nine. Number nine. Okay, so I'm looking at some stuff, and here comes a, a horror movie in my top 10, which I, I'm a big horror movie fan, but you gotta you gotta surprise me. You gotta make it happen. And this one really entertained me. So coming in at number nine is The Hunt. Um, starring Betty Gilpin and Hilary Swank, which seeing her in a horror movie is awesome. But anyway, this plays out a lot like, um, I don't want to say Hunger Games, but that's the first one that came to mind. But it's like, you know, run for your life, people dying, all kinds of stuff happening, crazy stuff, good little plot twist. But The Hunt is number nine on my list and comes in at a 7.4. This next movie, which comes in at number eight, I just loved it. It has a great feel, kind of like Zombieland, and just just kind of made my day. It was a real, it was a real good movie, and that is Love and Monsters. Dylan O'Brien did a great job in this, and I love the story. I love the special fret. FX. I loved um, Michael Rooker in this. He was funny, and this was this was kind of a sleeper. I didn't expect much out of this, but it turned out to be really good. So um, coming in at number eight for 2020, Love and Monsters gets a 7.6. See how low we are with these? It's it's really disappointing. But now we're moving into some good ones. We're starting to get into the eights. So. Coming in at number seven, and I really, really like this movie. It doesn't get the score. And I think a lot of that is, you know, just by the way it came out. It was really just a straight to Disney Plus and then eventually came out on physical media. But um, number seven of my favorites from 2020 is Onward. And um, I did kind of want this a little bit higher because I really love this movie. But um, yeah, it just it it plays great. It's it's a really good movie, but there's just something about it where you're like, okay, this seems kind of minor league. But still, um, I gave it an 8.0, and it does make my top ten list at at number seven for um, for 2020. So. You know, Boom Bastia. <laughs> Coming in at number six is another surprise movie that I was like, wow, this is a great sleeper pick. I didn't expect much out of this movie, but it was getting good reviews from people that I was, you know, that I watch on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. I'm getting some good, good feedback on this movie. So I'm going to try it out. So I, I bought it on Blu-ray. Because it was a very weak week, W E A K W E E K, um, to where um, there wasn't a whole lot out because you know COVID was hitting and not many movies were coming out. It was really slim pickings. So coming in at number six with an eight point two is Promising Young Woman, and I, I just I just love this movie. It was such a great story. Um, Carrie Mulligan did an amazing job with it, and the way it ended, it really kind of, it really kind of tugged at me a little bit. So it was a, you know, I, I wanted it to be more of a, more of a horror movie, more of a gore movie, but, um, or more of a slasher, like an American Mary or something like that. But yeah, you know, you get what you get. But this was really good. So, number six, Promising Young Woman, 
8.2. Also coming in 8.2, but this one made number five on my list, um, is Greenland. And this is, and I always get her name wrong, Raina Bachrain and Gerard Butler in a really, it's really good disaster movie. And I heard there was going to be a sequel, so I have no idea what they're going to do with the sequel, but this ought to be pretty good. But anyway, 8.2 Greenland comes in at number five. Okay, we're moving into the top four. And at number four, with an 8.3, comes the second movie off of Netflix, which didn't get a physical release. And that is The Old Guard. Um, I, I loved this movie. The cast is great, but I only recognize a couple of players. Um, the action is amazing. It's got a real, it's got a real Highlander feel to it, um, but it's just, it was, it was really cool. It was really neat watching Charlie Theron, and I highly recommend this. If you guys have Netflix, check this out. But Netflix put this on physical media. I want it. So again, I'm gonna try to put the, put the the cover up on the screen, courtesy of IMDb. Um, so hopefully that'll show up. But 8.3. Old Guard, number four on my list. All right, so let's get into the top three. The top three, we have um, we have an 8.4, an 8.5, and our only nine plus movie from, two, from 2020. So coming in at 8.4, number three on my list is Tenet. And this one, this one's weird. Okay, so you know, I, everybody's got to know this movie. This was this was the movie in 2020. This was the movie that was that was going to come out. Everybody was going to watch it. It was going to be amazing. And I don't know. It it just it came out at the wrong point. It should have come out, you know, a year before or two years later, and it'd probably make way more money. But um, it's a Chris Nolan film. John David Washington did amazing. And there are points where he totally sounds like his dad, which really kind of cracked me up. Robert Pattinson did a good job in this movie. And you've got to watch it all the way through. Because it, once you get to the end, then everything will kind of make sense. But still, whew, I had to watch it a couple times. But 8.4, Tenet. It's number three on my list of favorites from 2020. So now we're into the top two. So at an 8.5, I honestly th didn't like this movie. Um, like the first 30 minutes of this movie, I didn't like. I was like, man, I was really disappointed because the cast was great. And it looked like it was going to be amazing. Like it was going to have a... Uh, a snatch feel or lock stock and two smoking barrels or the usual suspects, something like that. And I was like, Oh man, it's really not going the direction I wanted to, but boy, did it shape up and it got really good at the end. So it finished off with an 8.5. So coming in at number two on my favorites from 2020 is the gentleman. Um, just a really cool thing. I'm, Guy Ritchie does some great work, and but I mean, look at the cast: Hugh Grant, Henry Golding, Colin Farrell, Matthew McConaughey, um, Charlie Hunnam, uh, Michelle Dockery. It's just a great cast, and, and this is this is one to watch for sure. Um, but yeah, there's there's one point where there's like a like an accident, like something happens. And from that point on, it is full tilt boogie for freedom and justice. And that's a line from, uh, that's a line from Firebirds. Anyway, so let's move into our number one film. I got to say, um, my number one film, great film. 
So it comes in at 9.2. It's my favorite film of 2020. So it does match the score. But it's kind of sad that my favorite film of 2020 turned out to be an animated film. It's kind of sad. It's not incredibly sad, but it's kind of sad. But this is a beautiful story. It plays well all the way through. Um, The cast did a great job. It was really well done. And my favorite film and the number one film for 2020 is Soul. I just... um, Jamie Foxx was amazing in here. And I just, yeah, I love the story. I thought, I thought it was amazing. Um, and it was one of those movies that makes you, makes you stop and think about, about what your purpose is on this planet. So, um, I've, I've probably watched this a dozen times since then and I, it never gets old. So I will keep watching this. Soul is my number one movie of 2020, but that's the list. And I've got to say it was a little, a little disappointing, but it was great to share these with you guys. Um, Look for more of these in the future. I'm going to keep working. I'm going to work backwards and I'm going to find a year to start with and work my way forward. So we'll alternate weeks. We'll do a new one and then an old one, and then we'll go that way. Um, If you guys have a year in mind, if you want me to do a particular year, I would love to hear it in the comments. Like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Um, I want that feedback, comments, I'll take them. But that's all for me from the 4K Lowdown. Look for some more stuff in the future. Until then, take care.